action. Hi, I'm Cassie. I'm the head of documentation for Team 14204, the Super Scream Bros. And today we're going to be walking through how we approach our portfolio and pit design. And this all helped us win the Think Award at our most recent qualifier. Game Manual 1 defines the engineering portfolio as a short and concise summary of the team's engineering journey throughout their season. The engineering pro portfolio should include sketches, discussions, and team meetings, design evolution, processes, obstacles, goals, and plans to learn new skills, and each team member's concise thoughts throughout the journey for the season. The engineering portfolio is like the team's CV or resume. They basically, what they're saying is that the portfolio is this 15-page book that has all the information for your entire season in it. This portfolio is really important because it basically tells your, the judges every single thing that they need to know about your team in order for you to qualify for awards. I think pretty much every single award um, that you can qualify for requires you to have an engineering portfolio. That's and Basically, this is what tells the judges what they need to know in order to help you qualify for these awards. So now I'm going to discuss what the goals for the portfolio are. Every team has a different goal for what their portfolio needs to do for them. It's supposed to be a reflection of your team. So obviously, your team's goals will, might not necessarily align with what my team's goals are. But I think overall, there are some basic needs that your portfolio has in order to be a successful representation of what your team does throughout the season. For us, our, probably our main goals that when it comes to the portfolio are being award specific. This might not necessarily mean specifically naming the awards inside of your portfolio, although you can definitely do that, but literally just having criteria for each award inside of your portfolio. Hit on that outreach, hit on that design, hit on the programming, and make sure that your portfolio is very well-rounded so you can qualify for as many awards as possible. We also try to have our portfolio be readable. If your portfolio is cluttered or um, difficult to read, the text isn't the right size or anything like that, then it's not going to be possible for the judges to understand what you've done. So that's something that you really need to prioritize and it, the flow of information needs to be very clear. We also try to have our portfolio be concise. Whenever I read the definition of the portfolio, one of the things that it said was it needs to be a short and concise summary. The judges had the opportunity to ask you questions at points throughout the competition. So don't worry about saying every little detail about it because That'll definitely help them get lost or maybe even get bored while they're reading your portfolio. So th keep things short and sweet so that you can get more in depth later. Another one of our goals for the portfolio is to have lots of pictures, which kind of leads me into my other goal for the portfolio is that we want to show growth. We want to show iterations. We want to show lessons learned, things that you've changed throughout the season and just how your team has improved over time. And pictures are a great way of illustrating that. You want to show them and not necessarily just tell them through words. And so really highlighting that growth, especially through images, is a great idea for your portfolio. It's something that we really strive to do. So we make our portfolio on a website called Canva. Um, it's a digital media editing site. You can um, format like stuff like flyers and that sort of thing. And so we use it um, to format our portfolio. I really like Canva just because it's very easy to move pictures and change sizes of text in like really fast and you don't have to worry about formatting very much, like how you might have to worry about it on a Word document, for example, because moving something around will not change the format of the rest of the page. Our team does have Canva Pro, which is a paid option of Canva. Um, this gives us special abilities such as being able to edit the pictures easier and like remove backgrounds. It also gives us some more freedom when it comes to um, the size of the page that we're working on. We have more freedom in um, changing that size. And also just gives us other things like access to um, graphics that they have on their database already. I would say that Canva Pro definitely works well for us, but I would not say it's necessary in order to have a positive experience on Canva. The way that we go through making our portfolio is a little bit different than some other teams. Uh, I'm the head of documentation on our team, so I'm kind of in charge of the whole, whole portfolio. But we want everyone to be able to contribute their ideas. And obviously, I might not be as knowledgeable on certain parts of the robot as the person who built those parts of the robot. So the way that we go about making our portfolio is we have each team member make a document, whether it be like a Word document or in um, OneNote or something like that, they just write it out and they include all pictures and information about the parts of their robot. And so in this document, they tell me the processes that they went through and they include all the images and information that they might want. 
but they do not format it because formatting it is kind of the tricky part when it comes to con combining all the things together. So I have everybody send me their personal documents that describe their process and include all their pictures. And then I am the one who formats it all together and combines it in the portfolio itself. This works for our team. It might not work for your team, but we've, it's proven to be really successful for us in keeping our design of our portfolio very, um, con uh, very consistent and also uh, kind of speeds up the process to make sure that every, every piece looks about the same. So it is 15 pages long plus a cover. So we did take advantage of that cover page. Some teams use it to portray information about their um, robot, about this season, and maybe sometimes put a key or a table of contents on their first page. We don't do that, but um, if that works for you guys, that's a great idea. But um, on our first page, we kind of just have a summary of the team itself. Uh, we introduce our name, our number, and just how long we've been around, and kind of just like our overarching belief systems and just like our motto in general and our mission statement. And it kind of just goes through like our personal values as a team, which is very important for the judges to see. And then after that, it's more team information. Um, this page has all of the team members on it and everybody's names and just how our team is split up. One thing that the judges will ask for or will possibly ask for during judging is how does your team divide um, responsibilities on the team? And so that's something that we try to highlight in our portfolio to try to answer the question before they get the chance to ask it or at least to make it more clear for them. After that, we have goals. Like I said, um, highlighting changes and progression throughout the season and also goals reached and lessons learned is really important. That's something we try to highlight throughout the entire thing. So we kind of started off with all the goals that we started with and the status. This year we were awesome and we completed all of our goals. So that's what you can see. But sometimes we um, change our goals or we do not complete them because, you know, every season is different. As you can see, our um, portfolio is color coded. One thing that really helps me and I think that will help a reader when it comes to flow of information is color coding. So we have a color assigned to each section of our team. So we have the team section, the general section, which is green, because that's our team color. And then we have outreach as red, strategy as yellow, design as blue, and programming as purple. That's what works for us. And I think that it makes it very clear where each section ends, but it's not completely necessary. That's just something I choose to do. So in our outreach overview, Again, with those lessons learned, that's something that's very important. Um, we have a section with our goals and um, the results of those goals and, you know, the statistics that we have and also the lessons that we've learned throughout the season. And then um, we have our outreach events. So we choose not to um, organize our portfolio based on award, but um, a judge who is knowledgeable about the awards would probably be able to infer that this stuff is leaning more towards motivate and connect because those are outreach-based um, awards. So even though we don't explicitly say which award each thing is for, we do um, try to highlight which section everything's for or which um, category each thing falls into. So yeah, um, when it comes to outreach, I try to have a, lots of pictures and um, descriptions of the, of the events that are most important to us. As you can see, we do not describe every single event, but just the ones that we think cause the most impact. And we truly try to highlight that impact by stating the people who we reached or the number of people that we reached. Um, but yeah, I'd say going into detail about every single award isn't completely necessary because every single team has ones that they're most proud of. And I think that you should highlight what you're most proud of rather than ones that don't really have much of an impact at all. After um, events, we have experts. Uh, this one's pretty self-explanatory. Um, one thing that we really try to highlight is processes as well. So as you can see at the top, we have a flow chart for how um, our team goes about reaching experts. And that's a question that they'll ask a lot. They'll ask for, well, what's your process for how you design a robot? What's your process for how you reach an expert? And so having that like explicitly in a flow chart makes it very clear to the reader um, how you go about things. So I think that's really important. For flowcharts, we use a website called Visio. It's um, part of a Microsoft package that we have um, because we're an uh, educational group. And so if you're an educational group because you're a robotics team, you probably have access to that too. So I definitely look into it. And also you can just make this sort of thing on Canva as well if you choose to use that. 
um, up next is media. Oh, sorry, actually I'm gonna say something first. So whenever we try to organize our information, we like to try to do it in either columns or rows because it enforces the reader to either look horizontally or vertically and kind of moves their eye across the page. So as you can see in the expert section, we use columns. We use three columns to kind of move the, um, their eye first across the top of the page and then down each section. So it makes it very clear where each section um, begins and ends. We also utilize those dotted lines to keep everything separate, which definitely helps us. Um, next is media. There's something special about this page. <laughs> um, we definitely try to use um, those like trigger images that can definitely like draw the reader's eye in and kind of be like a immediate reaction to like what it's pointing towards. So we have those logos for each social media app that we use and really try to um, draw the eye in whenever we're trying to describe each piece of media that we do. So in sustainability, you can see that I use another one of those flow charts, which is really helpful. It help, it's a very like, the flow chart says exactly what that paragraph of text says, but in a way that makes so much more sense to the reader. So it kind of just reaffirms what the reader will find out whenever they read that paragraph. Um, we also really try to highlight inside of our portfolio the strategy that we use, because it's not just about what you create or the things that you have done throughout your season, but it's what was the thought process behind that. So we like to highlight the systems that we use to keep ourselves on time and, and organized and the strategies that we use to keep our design moving along and continue iteration. And that's something that they really care about, um, especially for the Think Award. That's something that's really important. It's all about design strategy and how the thought process of how you made what you created. So really highlight that. I really recommend having a strategy section inside of your notebook, especially if you're one of those teams going for Think. That's all that they're trying to look for when it comes to that. We also really try to highlight game strategy as well because even though it doesn't seem like something that would be important when it comes to like how you design your robot, it really, um, at least for our team, is something that really impacts like how we design a robot. Like looking at this challenge, obviously whenever you saw those polls, you had to have this thought process, I'm going to make a claw so I can easily pick up these cones. And that is kind of something that we really try to highlight is how does our game strategy affect our designs and throughout the season. And so that's something that we try to do in the game strategy section. And then as you can see, it moves into design. Before each section um, for outreach, design, and programming, I like to have a little overview section. This is a summary and like to include information that you might not necessarily be able to find out in the design section. So that's what we have here. And then I'd say the most important thing when it comes to design is showing those iterations, like I said, um, and pictures, obviously, because you can write about something all you want, but until you show it to someone, they can't really comprehend what that part of your robot really looks like. So um, as you can see, we kind of, there's a lot more parts of the robot than there are pages in the notebook for us to use. So instead of dedicating a page to each part of the robot, we do keep our sections very small. And I know that it might seem like, oh, I'm not telling them enough information. Oh, it doesn't seem like it's enough to be able to... Um, teach them what they need to know about a robot. It's not showing the entire process. What we try to do when it comes to um, the portfolio, like I said, is to keep things very concise just because they can have a gen general idea when it comes to like, for example, the virtual four bar, this kind of has a general idea of like how it works and um, the changes that we've made throughout the season, but it doesn't go into every single detail. And that really encourages the judges to come in and um, talk to us about it and ask questions. And so it's less about, telling them everything that they need to know and more telling them what they need to ask questions about in the future. And so that's something that we really prioritize when it comes to our portfolio. Um, one thing that I really try to utilize is arrows. Um, it seems simple, but it's not the first thought for everybody. So, you know, right here, you can see that we've used arrows to show how things have changed and really to emphasize those iterations. Because like I said, we do include our strategy in our thing and one of the biggest parts of our strategy is improvement it's that never-ending cycle of continuing to iterate upon your designs and so um we really want to show that we use that strategy that we use that idea of improvement inside of our actual designs so i think one of the biggest things for us is connecting those design strategies that we mentioned previously with our actual designs and showing how each design 
actively used each aspect of our design processes. When it comes to programming, it's kind of tricky because a lot of programming does not have an image attached to it. And so I think that one thing that we really struggled with this year and we really had to overcome this year is how can we make something that's completely conceptual into a visual idea. And obviously we still use a lot of words because it is a lot of just explaining, but we tried to make some aspects of it more visual than um, we have in the past. For example, instead of just saying what sensors we use, we include a picture of our robot to show where the sensors and driver feedback lights are located on our robot and really try to make it interesting for the viewer and also understandable for the viewer when it came to um, looking at that. And then when it comes to autonomous, we definitely want to include that picture of our um, the autonomous path diagram because that is something that they're looking for. One thing that I would keep in mind when it comes to documenting your programming is that as you can see, this is considerably less space that I took up with this information than I did for design, strategy, or outreach. Um, I only gave two pages to this programming whenever for the other ones I gave several pages. And so that was partially because our team just simply does not have a very advanced programming. So one thing that I would keep in mind is that you should play to your team's strengths. So for example, one of our weaknesses is in our programming. This year we kind of only started experimenting with programming in regards to Roadrunner and that sort of thing. So it's taken a moment for us to really become more advanced when it comes to this. We do tend to excel more at design and outreach. So if you notice, we have a lot more pages dedicated to design and outreach in our portfolio than we do to programming. And so if your team excels at programming, that's your biggest thing, then use up more pages, talk about it as much as you want, because this entire book is just supposed to be bragging about all the things that you're proud of. And so really play to your, play to your own strengths when it comes to your um, portfolio. But one thing that I would say to keep in mind with um, programming documentation is that you are given the control award as well. So um, if your team excels at programming, you are obviously probably going to be going towards programming themed awards. If you have any more questions or if you're interested in learning more about our portfolio, we do have it um, linked on our website. So we really encourage you to um, go, go look at it. <laughs>